Hello once again and welcome to Friendship Moments with Friendship Baptist Church in Killen, Alabama. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the superpower that rules and reigns over everyone. You're the Creator God. Father, we pray as we go into this study that you would teach us to glorify you, to exalt you, to honor you and to fear you in reverence for your mighty power and glory. Teach us to once again tremble before you in the knowledge of who you are and how just you are, remembering that you will not strive with man forever. Thank you for your love, grace, and mercy, for your salvation, but also for your justice. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have we forgotten to glorify God? Glorify means to magnify, lift up, honor, exalt, and highly esteem above all others. Is this one of those things we do quietly in our hearts? The Bible is filled with the admonishment to glorify God and some of the consequences for not doing so. Praising Him is giving Him glory. But how often do we, from our hearts, lose ourselves in praise? To the one and only true God, creator of heaven and earth, the one who is above all things. Well, the list could go on through eternity. Listen to what Paul says about those who don't give God the glory due him. Romans 1, 18 and 21. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. For even though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or give thanks. But they became futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart was darkened. It is important for us to glorify God. We go to him in prayer, asking for things, petitioning things. We might say a quick praise or a quick thank you. But let's be honest, and I'm included. Most of us spend most of our time praying for things or for help. The us is the sinner, or or the uh, prayers that people have asked us to pray for them is the center part of our prayer. But we must remember that we are praying to the Almighty God, and give Him the glory due Him because Satan can't stand the worship and praise to God or us giving God glory. We have a Bible that is filled with worship and praise that will glorify him. And a good starting place to learn how awesome he is is his word. And it will lead us into a life that will glorify him just because he is worthy. I want to read to you Psalm 145 as an example of how we could pray. I will extol you, or magnify, or glorify you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and highly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise your works to another. Oh, how I wish I had praised God's works to my children when they were growing up, and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wonderful works, I will meditate. Do we think upon his wonderful works during the day? Do we recount what he has done and who he is in our hearts? Men shall speak of the power of your awesome acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall eagerly utter the memory of your abundant goodness and will shout joyfully of your righteousness. Most of us are very conservative Christians, and we don't shout about anything that has to do with God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great in loving kindness. Just reading through the Old Testament will show you that. It's a quick read to read through it, but you have to watch and listen and pay attention to what's taking place in the time. God gave them hundreds of years and how many prophets and judges to call them back 
begging them to come back to him, and they would not listen. God is good to all, and his mercies are over all his works. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. Are we filled with thanksgiving? Because, oh, how blessed we are. If we're breathing, we have a roof over our heads, food on our table, clothes on our back. If we have our health and can walk and see, can hear, we are blessed by God. And your godly ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power. We have a glorious kingdom awaiting us. A glorious time for all eternity with Jesus. We need to be looking for that and glorifying God that he's not going to leave us here with this corrupt world, but he's going to change everything, and that's coming very soon. To make known to the sons of men your mighty acts and the glory of the majesty of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord sustains all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his deeds. Hmm. Kind. I don't think God's idea of kindness and my idea of kindness always mesh. But he's God, and he knows what true kindness is. And sometimes his kindness can hurt. <laughs> but we need it. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. If we truly, truly want to know him, he's near, and he will answer. He will fulfill the desire of those who fear him, who reverence him, who glorify him, who recognize him who he is. He will also hear their cry and will save them. The Lord keeps all who love him, but all the wicked he's going to destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. And I would like to leave you with this prayer that Paul prayed, Romans 15, 5 through 7. Now may the God who gives perseverance and encouragement grant you to be of the same mind with one another according to Christ Jesus, so that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, accept one another just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. Amen.